started Shapeways eight years ago when pretty much nobody uh, that I knew at least had heard about this technology and that is of course quickly changing. Even Shapeways is pretty well known already in this room, which is cool. But um, before we dive in to what 3D printing means for, for consumers, but also what kind of new business models it is enabling, I think we need to fully understand why uh, 3D printing is changing the way we make things. So I think um, if you think about yourself and, and, and think about uh, how you perceive products, in some ways, for certain types of products, we really know what we want whether it's for a hobby pr uh, project, whether it's to improve your house, decorate your house, whether it's the perfect gift, or something are you just simply passionate about. Um, and in those cases, you either go to a store that specializes in those products and you're lucky and you find exactly what you want, or you don't. And the problem with mass manufacturing is, if you don't find it, you know, uh, you have to take whatever is available because mass manufacturing does not deliver on those specific individual needs that we have as humans. You know, um, people know what they want. If you look around, you see a big custom car scene. You see people making their own t-shirts, people making their own coffee cups, etc., etc. And this is because people, in some cases, and especially the products they care about, they know what they want, right? But for mass manufacturing to be efficient and effective, and actually, you know, if we look at how we structure society even, you know, we need to big hit the big numbers. We think about hits, and hits are equal to success. Why? Because if you have a product that sells in the thousands and millions, we can effectively and efficiently make it with mass manufacturing. The whole model works, and everybody makes money, and that's why hits and big numbers are equal to success. But again, if it is a product that we have an individual need in, then the big numbers don't work anymore. We're not part of the huge group. We want to have exactly what we want. So how do we do that? And I think um, the 3D printing is capable, and these, all these coffee cups are 3D printed, um, to deliver on that. 3D printing can make items exactly as you want it, because it has this, this benefit that you don't have to set up a complete assembly line. But the setup of the assembly line is basically the digital file. It's basically the design that you have on your computer. You give it to the machine, and the machine can make it. And that, all of a sudden, enables us to make individual products which again doesn't make sense for everything perhaps, but it does make a lot of sense for the things we're passionate about. Like coffee, I'm a big coffee fan, so I enjoy drinking my coffee from a cup that is exactly the size I want. Not too big, not too small, just right. And with 3D printing, I can. 3D printing enables us to make things that the world has never seen before, just because we can. You know, this is um, a piece of art from Theo Janssen called the Strandbeest. And uh, he first was making these uh, from electrical tubing uh, six to eight feet high, and he was um, putting a sail on them, and they walked on the beach. Strand based is Dutch for beach walker. And then two students came around, and they figured, we can scale this down, and um, we can print it. And actually, the cool thing is that this item contains 80 moving parts. It's not assembled. You don't need to assemble moving parts. It just is printed in one shot. It comes out of the machine, you clean off the residual uh, product powder, and then you have this, this item. Does it have any use? No. Nope. Is it kind of cool? I think so. And because they thought it was cool, they did it. And actually lots of people are buying it because they like Theo Janssen's crazy designs and they like this thing. And it so let's talk about some of the use cases that you know, the large community at Shapeways of over half a million creative people are putting into, you know, 3D printing into use for. And you will find that they're actually pretty practical. GoPro cameras are hugely popular and people use them in all kinds of ways. So we heard about this, uh, this guy who was making a GoPro head mount. He was a sky, he's a skydiver. And um, you know the mounts he could find weren't exactly to his taste. So he figured, let's print one. And uh, you know after doing that, uh, he had exactly what he needed. Or an iPhone case. You know, granted, you can buy lots of iPhone cases um, at uh, different stores. But if you want to have one that you come up with, or if you want to have one that you think is kind of cool and it's not available, then with 3D printing you now can. The cool thing is, again, this dial actually works. It's not yet integrated with the phone, I'm waiting for that one. But uh, at least if you turn it, it will, it will go back. Because with 3D printing you can not only make moving parts, but you can even use the elasticity of the material to make springs. Or model trains. Um, I grew up with a dad that was, mad, was and still is madly in love with model trains. And actually, you know, the virus got onto me a little bit as well. 
But what I also heard um, is that, you know, you buy whatever is available. There were certain brands that you could buy from, and they made certain engines and certain carts and certain houses, etc. And if the train you wanted uh, wasn't available, then that was it. Um, the limitation of mass manufacturing again. Now with 3D printing, we have a large group of our community that is dedicated to making model trains. They print them, and then they hand paint them in, in many cases. We don't have yet the high definition full color plastics that we would need to have this done in one shot, although this is changing. Uh, HP has announced that their new machine will have high color, uh, full, full color and high definition plastic. So I'm excited about that one, what that will do for this, this group uh, as an example. But um, you know, people can now make their own model trains. And um, if you think that is small, uh, you should know that in Germany alone, the revenue in model trains is over $1 billion. So, you know, or jewelry. Um, one of the most advanced uh, technologies that you can do with, with uh, 3D printing from a quality perspective is actually precious metals. The precious metals we print uh, rival um, the, the jewelry you will buy in your, your jewelry store, even the high-end ones. But now you can do things that were previously impossible. Like a guy who wanted to give his, um, his uh, significant other a beautiful uh, pendant, but not just a pendant. This pendant actually um, is composed of the biggest uh, asteroids that circle the sun. He used the data that he found at NASA, um, how those asteroids were circling the sun, uh, modeled it into a pendant, and uh, now he had something really cool. Not for everybody, probably not, but it is cool that you can do it. And that is the power of 3D printing. Or board games. You know, I used to make my own board games when I was a kid. And um, the way I did it was using cardboard and pieces of paper. And uh, you know, some crayons and stuff like that. Nowadays, you can make your own board game pieces. But besides making things for yourself, there is more going on. Because what you can also do um, at Shapeways and in other places is um, start your own shop. You know, if you can make things uniquely for yourself, why only make it for yourself? You know, just after we launched already, the, the first users told me that when they showed their products to others, they said, I want one too. Think about this guy who made the, the GoPro mount. I'm sure he has some buddies who would want this mount as well if it's, it's working fine. So what you can now do is open a store. You put the digital design in the store, and all of a sudden you can start selling those pro products. How does that work? Well, you know what it costs to make it. That's shown to you. You put any kind of markup on top of that that you feel fine with. Doesn't need to, but you can. And then when someone else buys it, you make money, and the other guy gets the product. Awesome. In this way, we now have over 22,000 people selling products on Shapeways. The amount of products is somewhere close to 2 million. Pretty soon we'll hit that. And they made over $2 million in 2014, those shop owners. So that's getting significant. Can you imagine that you, know, you come up with something cool, you open a store, and all of a sudden you start making money? You know, I have many examples of, of people who, who started doing that and uh, became successful, like Michiel Cornelissen. You know, he thought that the existing iPad stand wasn't useful enough for him, so he came up with his own. He designed it, uh, as he told me, in a few hours on his computer. He printed one to see where it would work, and it did. And then he uh, started to sell them. And uh, you know, his cost to do that, the risk to do that, to bring a product to market as a designer, almost went to zero. You know, the cost he, he had on this project was his time, you know, maybe a few days in total, uh, a few test prints, um, you know, a few, 20, 40 bucks. And then you start selling. And he made over $30,000 selling those. So the risk is zero, and you can try. And if it works, it's great. If it doesn't, you improve. Or two undergrad students who wanted to make beautiful jewelry. Well, how do you do that when you're an undergrad? You know, the best opportunity you had until now was work for a jewelry uh, company. But you know, good luck um, applying for a job. We're undergrads. We want to make jewelry for you. You know, I don't think most companies would take that seriously. So, they also didn't have the money to invest in their own production uh, facility or their own uh, their own tools. So they used Shapeways, and they were successful. Even to the point that uh, you know you can use input from others, uh, crayon creatures. I love what they are doing. Um, you know you have templates. You have your kids use crayons to color them in, and then you you, you hand it over to crayon creatures, and he makes it into a physical uh, little toy. It's not a toy to play with just yet. 
because the material used in this case is a little bit fragile. But it is starting to show the promise that, um, you know, based on the input of a kid, um, he or she can make his own toys. And I think that's pretty phenomenal. Or just like a design concept idea. 30 coffee cups in 30 days, just because you can. Having all said that, um, the things we talked about were all original art, right? So, you know, people can make things for themselves when they come up with it. People can sell those things. But what if you have an idea based on something that already exists? Well, until recently, that was not possible. You know, if you come up with a great um, transformer that isn't part of the transformer, or even if it is a lookalike from the existing transformers, you can't print that because the rights holders will not like that. And, you know, they have a point. And we've seen that problem before on the internet. When, you know, broadband became available, people started sharing their music and movies using Napster, and obviously, the music and, and, and entertainment industry didn't like that. I understand that. And um, a fight ensued, you know. Um, we didn't look at the, pro the to solve the problem, but for years, um, it was like you shouldn't be doing that. Um, until finally, uh, with streaming and iTunes, this problem has been solved. So, how do we apply this knowledge? How do we get um, this concept of existing art, and how can we give that availability of using that existing uh, IP to, uh, to users in 3D printing? Well, that's why I'm really excited that we're working with Hasbro. Hasbro had the courage and the vision to say, you guys already probably in your community have lots of people who are fans of Monopoly or My Little Pony or Transformers, Dungeons and & Dragons, and I, they were right. We couldn't print those, and, but we knew that there was passion around those brands. We knew people wanted to have those items. So Hasbro said, well, why don't we make that possible? Why don't we figure out a way to share the revenue when people buy it and everybody is happy? People can make any transformer they want and as long as they tick the box that it is a transformer item, we're okay with that. People can make their own little tokens for Monopoly or make their own My Little Ponies. Turns out um, that My Little Ponies are really, uh, really popular and that's where we started and this is at, uh, at um, one of the My Little Pony conferences that actually are held. Um, and what is happening really is that where social media was embracing the brands already by talking to them, now this extends into physical products. Brands can, can directly relate with their users, with the consumers, about the products they get. And that's really powerful. Um, why did we start with My Little Pony? Because there was a lot of excitement around it and because the material really worked. So these are some examples of uh, the new My Little Ponies that uh, popped up as a result, which I think are you know, pretty cool. And then pretty soon, um, we're extending that to other brands like G.I. Joe, Monopoly, Dungeons and & Dragons, Scrabble, and probably many, many more. Uh, this is just the early days. I can still remember when we started Shapeways and we started to see you know, people starting to upload content. Um, it always starts small and then it starts to rise and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we see the same now with not with original content, but with the deriv derivative art. You know, in the beginning, it's, it's small and people start to, to understand and they, and they wrestle with the idea, so what can I make? Is this even possible? You know, how far can I push it? Uh, are they gonna stop me? And uh, slowly but surely, we see uh, more and more activity in this, uh, in this space as well, which I think is kind of exciting because if you think about it, we're now opening the other half of the spectrum. We already had original content, things that people come up with themselves. Now we're enabling derivative art. I hope um, that when the new Star Wars movie comes out, we can announce to our community that they can make their own Star Wars uh, items. That would be amazing. Um, you know, who knows? So people can make all kinds of, of, of cool things based on those, on, those, um, on those brands. Why is this so phenomenal? Well, you have to think about even with um, merchandising around movies um, and around existing brands, uh, the companies take a huge risk. Because what they need to do is they need to figure out what are these items that people want to buy based on our brands. Are they t-shirts? Are they little figurines? Um, are they key hangers, key, uh, keychain hangers? What are the items that people are most excited about to buy based on, on my IP? And they need to do market research, and they need to do prototyping, and they need to figure it out. And that is risky, because you need to, with mass manufacturing, make tens of, and even not hundreds of thousands of items. And if you then don't sell them, you lose a lot of money. Well, if we use the model that I just explained, 
all of that can go away. Because the brands can give the fans, perhaps in the early phases, the high-end fans, the guys who can design, the ability to make merchandising. And then when people start buying it, the brands start to see immediately where the need is. They start to see which things are very popular and which things are not. And then based on that, they can either they can let it happen and keep growing or even help by taking those items that are most popular and making them with mass manufacturing. I have no problem with that. Or they can use the creativity and uh, take it into the, the movies, the cartoons, or in other places. I think that is a powerful concept that all of a sudden, you know, the users, the fans, start to define what merchandising is most popular. And it's no longer the brands that have to come up with it. It's um, a totally different way to think about product development. And it's much more empowering to the end user, which I think is phenomenal. So those are the three things that already are happening based on 3D printing in the consumer space. People make their own stuff because they know, because they know how to do it, because they know what they want. People sell products, they build their own businesses. And as I said, we have tens of thousands of those and they're growing quickly. And last, you know, brands are starting to understand that actually their IP is probably their biggest asset. And if they can unleash that IP and combine it with the creativity of the millions of people that are fans of it, they can have huge benefits because there is also a certain cool factor associated to it. You know, it's much cooler as a brand that you say, yes, you can, instead of no, you can't. Stopping people is never a popular thing. So on that note, I would like to end it and say, you know, let's hope that we all, uh, just like the brands embrace 3D printing, we all embrace it. And uh, I'm very excited about the future. Thank you so much. 